Welcome to ESPN Classic. I'm Jimmy Roberts. Today, we take a look back at 1966, the U.S. Open, played at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. Why is the U.S. Open one of the world's premier sporting events? Simple. It's the world's best golfers, the country's most difficult courses, the most extreme conditions. For many, in fact, it's golf's most valued prize. And so the tension that builds with each shot over 72 holes is enormous and really comes to a boil in the final round. That's why our national championship has been filled with golfers who were extraordinary on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, but only ordinary on Sunday. The third round leader at Olympic in 66 was Arnold Palmer. Although Palmer was still an imposing figure at 36, his last big victory had been in 1964 at the Masters. His only open win, 1960, at Cherry Hills. But any doubts about Palmer's ability were quickly put to rest as he led the field by three strokes going into the final round. The man behind him, Billy Casper, the 1959 Open champion when it was played at Wingfoot. In the final round, Palmer shot an impressive 32 on the front nine, leading Casper by a whopping seven strokes at the turn. He assumed the Open was his and began his assault on the great Ben Hogan 72-hole scoring record of 276. But Palmer's aggressive play and swashbuckling style got the best of him that day, as his lead was reduced to five strokes going into the final five holes. Still maintaining a sizable lead, Palmer was now caught in a bind. What to do? Challenge Hogan's record by making at least par on the remaining holes, or focus on holding off Casper for his second open title? We'll begin the coverage with Dave Marr and Jack Nicklaus, competitors, as they approach their tee shots on the par 3 15th hole. Here's Jim McKay. We're back at the United States Open Golf Championship at the Olympic Country Club in San Francisco on a perfect golfing day. This is the 15th hole again. Par 3, 150 yards, and on the tee, in the shadows, we have Dave Marr, the current PGA champion, and Jack Nicklaus, twice the winner in the last two years of the Masters. Now here is Tony Lima with his fourth shot on 16, which is a par 5 hole, so he's still in shape to possibly get his par there. Tony's been playing well today, but now here's Dave Marr who will hit first. He just birdied the 14th hole. Dave is six over par for the championship right now. In a tie for fifth place with Phil Rogers. Marr played very well yesterday with a round of 68. Today, however, he is three over par for this round. Dave shot a beautiful shot. It might be of interest as Jack Nicholas steps up, but there hasn't been a hole in one in the United States Open in 10 years since Billy Kuntz, one of two fine golfing brothers, amateurs from the Bonnie Briar Club in Larchmont, New York. Billy Kuntz had a hole in one in Rochester. That's been a long time. Well, Jack. Now, Nicholas, many people thought, might charge today after rounds of 71, 71, and 69. He started one over par, but he's now three over on today's round, four over for the championship. Puts him in a tie for third with Tony Lima. Some nine shots behind Arnold Palmer. Boats in Lake Merced. In this beautiful scene, I hope you're watching in color. Nicholas with his deliberate style of play. It's a good shot. A little long. It does not bite quite as much as he would have liked it to. It's still on the putting surface on the back side, but he's going to have a long putt of about 40 feet. Here's the way Jack Nicholas has gotten to this very point in the championship, right up to this hole. He's had 12 birdies, 41 pars, 14 bogeys, and one double bogey. That double bogey came just a few holes ago and uh, has cost him a part of his chance. All this being computed for you by General Electric the mechanical marvel back in Phoenix, Arizona, that's being fed the information, computing it, and flashing it right back. Now we have Nicholas and uh, Marr walking up this 15th fairway. The hole is not played particularly difficult today. Here is Bill Casper on the 14th fairway. He had a good tee shot in the middle of the fairway. He'll be hitting into a green that has a sharp slope up. You must fly the ball across a deep gully and then to this green. The pin placement today, pretty difficult. In back of that bunker, there's a bunker just behind that little hummock there where you see the shadow on the left side of the screen. Casper, of course, is playing with Arnold Palmer, who has a five-shot lead. The applause is for Jack Nicholas coming on the 15th green. But here is uh, Bill Casper 
the only man really who has any sort of chance to catch Arnold Palmer. The biggest margin of victory in a U.S. Open, by the way, is much more than these five shots. It was 11 by Will Willie Smith back in 1899. Jim Barnes, who died just a few weeks ago, won by nine in 1921. There's a great shot. So Casper still continues to come at Arnold. Palmer's been driving tremendously today. I saw him on the first hole when they started out. He drove 270 yards. And to the cheers, the almost animal-like cheers of Arnie's army, he pulled out a driver for his second shot and blasted it onto the green. He got a bird, and that started the way things have been going today. Arnold changing his club, changing his mind. So many things about this man that are dramatic and exciting. The bogeys he gets as well as the birdies. The fact that he does sometimes change his mind, change his club. And the way he seems to care so very much what happens. Going after the record for an open championship. In fact, if he pars in, he will break Ben Hogan's record by one shot. So it's Palmer against the record right now. Second shot is long. He's gonna have a tough putt coming back to him. Arnie's army streaming down the fairway. Here we have Dave Marr, the PGA champion. Remember that thriller out near Pittsburgh last summer? We were there and we'll be at many other great golf championships this summer. The next one coming up will be the British Open live on the satellite in just a few weeks. We'll be on on Friday evening and Saturday live for the final round. Dave has a good shot at this bird. Should be a little break around the hole as the ball slows down. It's about a 12-foot putt. If he makes it a move ahead of Phil Rogers, Didn't do it. Here's Arnold Palmer on the 14th green. A little switching back and forth here. Trying to give you as much of the action as we possibly can. This is this big, long attempt at a birdie that Arnold Palmer has. Firm stroke. Dave Marr got his par here at uh, 15, just as Arnold Palmer almost got that birdie, but it'll be a par. He remains five under and one shot ahead of Ben Hogan's record for the Open Championship that was set in 1948. A record that has stood for 18 years. There's Arnold Palmer's par on the 14th hole. Arnold, you'll remember, did not have a particularly good season last year. That is by Arnold Palmer's standards. He finally decided that he was perhaps devoting too much of his time to his outside business interests. And before the season began, he said, this is a year of total dedication to the game of golf. It's been paying off here for the last four days. Bill Casper in second place, five shots back, as you see. Our computer repeating the scores. If any changes had occurred in that wink of an eye, the computer would have registered them. Bill Casper has this for a bird. He could move to within four shots of the lead. And stranger things have happened in the United States Open, so stay with us. No birdie this time. By the way, to the mothers of America, we would like to say, remember, it's Father's Day, so don't disturb him. Straight through to 8 o'clock. The par for Bill Casper, who remains five shots behind Arnold Palmer. We'll be back with more action from the U.S. Open Golf Championship in just a moment. There comes a point when one more sequin will ruin the dress. When one more brushstroke will spoil the painting. There comes a point when anything more is simply more. Park Avenue by Buick. Power, comfort, unparalleled elegance. And now, Park Avenue is even more rewarding. 
Elegance Luxury, pure and simple. As a force player, the only way you get better is to play against defenders that are bigger, stronger, and meaner than you. There you go, come on. You have to take the paint. Nobody owns the paint. And don't bring your C game to count for us. Bring your A game. Oh! Man, you're going to get rejected by someone who even have hands. Tractor, come show them how it's done. Go, Tractor, show them how it's done. Oh, Richie, we got a triple scooper here. Okay, people, this is a phone, and this is a dollar. You still with me? Well, that's good. Now, dial this number, and all your long-distance calls from home could cost less than a buck. That's right, with 1010-220, all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Talk longer, and it's just 10 cents for each extra minute. No fees, no contracts. Am I right, Poochie? Just dial 1010-220, then one, then the number. Bottom line, you get up to 20 minutes on this for less than this. You got that? Good, because if I'm not mistaken, I think nature's calling my dog. Rogaine Extra Strength is proven to work for four out of five men. I like my chances. Only Rogaine has extra strength, and it's proven to stop hair loss or regrow hair. Rogaine Extra Strength, proven to work. ESPN Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes. He not only redefined his position, he forever changed the way his sport is played. Eight Norris trophies, three consecutive MVPs. Twice he led the league in scoring, assists five times. Quite possibly the greatest defenseman of all time. Sports Century athlete number 31, the legendary Bruin Bobby Orr. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN. Presented by General Motors. You're watching the 1966 U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. Again, we're back at the Olympic Country Club in San Francisco. Jim McKay reporting from the 15th green. On the 15th tee stand the two leaders in this championship, Bill Casper, right here, who won the Open in 1959 at the Wingfoot Club outside New York. Bill, the most under-publicized in many ways golfer of all time. He's only the second leading money winner there's ever been in the modern era, right behind the man he's playing with, Arnold Palmer. And he has hit a beautiful shot. Running a little long, however. So he's going to have a putt a little bit shorter than the one we saw that uh, a few minutes ago. He's got about a 35-footer. Arnold Palmer going for the record. The man who has never backed into a championship in his life, he knows only one way to play golf, and that is to charge. All along this fairway is jammed Arnie's army. An undisciplined army, more like a band of revolutionaries, really. They shout and holler and scream and run, but now they're silent because their leader is about to hit a seven iron to the 15th green. The wind is blowing, blowing golfers right to golfers left. It comes. It's very close to that bunker. It's in the bunker. Arnold Palmer has hit trouble on the 15th hole. He has put it in the bunker to the right of the green. He's going to have to come up over a very sharp bank and then will run down to the pin, which is only about 20 feet in from the side of the green. It's going to be very difficult for him to stop it close to the flag stick. So he has a tough bunker shot coming up. Billy Casper, on the other hand, has at least a shot at a birdie. Let's quickly go to Chris on 17. Bob Goldby, native of Illinois, is hitting his fourth stroke on this par four 17th. Goldby at this point is 11 over par, playing with Tony Lima, who is five over for the tournament.
Chris. Goldby left that putt considerably short, uh, about uh, five feet. He's still putting uphill. Those kind really cost money at this stage of the game. Made of six, double bogey six, at this very difficult 17th hole. Goldby started out today nine over. And as you see, he now is 13 over. He has lost four more shots to par. On this, the fourth round of the United States Open, a championship which is being led by Arnold Palmer, who has led it for two days by himself, tied after two rounds with Billy Casper, and now he leads that same man by five strokes. Lose it. Tony Lima has a little putt here that will break a slight bit to his right. Other contenders, Nicholas is four over at the moment. Dave Marr is six over, and he's playing brilliantly after a very bad start here on this fourth and final round. Here is Lima. Beautiful putt. Tony Lima, a native of San Leandro, California. As we go back to Jim McKay. Arnold Palmer's shot, as you see, the lie is pretty good in the bunker. He's going to have to try to stop this quickly when it gets on the green. It's a very delicate trap shot. And a good one. But long. Almost impossible to stop it any shorter. Byron, would you say that was about right? I, I, I just can't see any way how he could have stopped it shorter than that with that pin that close to the green. And that close and pitching downhill on that hard green, now that sand, you can't put much spin on the ball out of the sand. It's fairly heavy. There'd be no way to stop the ball close to the hole unless you were to hit an absolute super shot. Right. Now, Billy Casper will putt first, attempting a birdie. It's conceivable we could have a swing of two shots here. Palmer leading by five just could find that lead cut to three. Now Casper has that putt that should break to the right a little bit, right around the hole, about a 30-footer. delicate putting stroke of Bill Casper, and he has it. Bill Casper will gain at least one shot on this hole with a birdie two. He's now one under for the championship. And one under on today's round. Arnold Palmer must keep this, must make this shot to keep his lead at four shots. Four times the Masters champion, the only man to achieve that feat. He's twice won the British Open, just once the United States Open. That was in 1960, when he trailed by seven shots going into the last round, then birdied six of them. The first seven holes on that final 18, and went on to win. That so familiar picture of Arnold Palmer from the rear hunched over his putt oblivious to the world for these few moments. Nope. And he has a little bit of a putt coming back. Arnold Palmer is going to take at least four shots on the 15th hole. And don't take this one for granted. The lead from five shots has gone to three shots on this one tiny little hole, only 150 yards, and so innocent in appearance. No, this one is not automatic at all. In the right side of the cup, he has a bogey four, 
Billy Casper a birdie two. The lead has shrunken to three shots. Arnold Palmer now four under for the championship and tied with Ben Hogan's record at this moment. Let's go to Bill Fleming over on 16 as they move there. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Jim. Well, as you call it, uh, there was a swing of two strokes there, and as Arnold Palmer and Bill Casper prepare to drive the 16th, we're looking down the 16th hole. As you can see, it's a long, long dog leg uh, to the golfer's left. Those of you who were with us yesterday recall that this is the longest hole on the golf course, and there is the big tree, as the golfer sees it from his left, that guards this green. It literally is uh, two shots. They're blind. The tee shot, of course, he can't see the green. And the second shot, he um, can't see it either. 604 yards long. Here's Billy Casper's drive. And Arnold Palmer getting ready to swing. He's had a six, a five, and a four here in the three rounds. This hole is not only long and beautiful, but it is also fragrant. It's got eucalyptus trees and pine trees on both sides. I don't know, but I think that is real trouble. As you see, that ball hit the tree as he cut it down the left side. And that ball is has dropped right down, apparently, below the tree. I did not see it come out of the tree. Now, if the ball is still in the tree, and Arnold can positively identify it as his ball, then that is called an unplayable lie. But the word is that the ball has fallen out of the tree, and uh, that is very fortunate indeed. We'll be back with more from the U.S. Open Championship here in San Francisco in just a moment. ESPN The Magazine presents Yvonne Rodriguez and Dan Patrick. You're going to have to hide those. They're stealing the signs. Right? Signs? Yeah. yeah. Better? Yeah, it's a lot better. You guys okay? You're getting better. No, you're, you're sure? getting it. No, you're getting it. Sports' greatest stars turn to Dan Patrick for insights that really help their game. You can tell by the spin if it's going to go fair or foul. You might be right, Yeah. Man. Yeah. Let's, let's do it again. And in return, they tell Dan amazing stuff for his ESPN The Magazine interviews. Do you ever get tired of squatting? Uh, in September, yes. <laughs> Call now for ESPN The Magazine and get this navy blue windbreaker absolutely free. A free water-resistant nylon windbreaker, plus sports the way it ought to be, with unbelievable photos, inside information, player profiles, and Dan Patrick's incredible interviews. When's the last time you sang the Puerto Rican National Anthem? I'm not a good singer. <laughs> Subscribe now. Get 26 issues a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. A dollar an issue. That's 66% off the newsstand price. And remember, you'll get this navy blue windbreaker with a zip front pocket and embroidered ESPN, the magazine logo, free. Camera always picks this up when you're in the dugout. You got to learn. Project. That's warning track power with seeds. Call now for ESPN The Magazine and your free windbreaker. 1-800-951-1818. The NBA Finals. They bring out greatness in those that are good and make heroes out of those that are great. 1970, the Knicks and Lakers hit the hardwood as Chamberlain and Reed go one-on-one. -on -one. Then Larry Bird and Magic Johnson define the 80s. And the NBA's best, Michael Jordan, begins the Bulls dynasty in the 90s. 16 games spanning three decades. Don't miss the ultimate NBA Finals, only on ESPN Classic, all day Saturday. To the 1% of you who ask more from a truck, we suggest the all-new GMC Sierra. Totally redesigned with our most powerful Vortec V8s ever. And a revolutionary towing system. One percenters, your wait is over. Now the only pickup with an exclusive tow haul mode has something designed just to pull you in. The National Sierra Invitation Days, going on now. Now is the perfect time to start weightlifting. 
the perfect time for solo flex for a lot of good reasons. No other exercise is better for your overall health than weightlifting. The muscle you build on Soloflex increases your metabolism to burn fat 24 hours a day. Weightlifting also boosts your immune system and increases your aerobic capacity. Weightlifting strengthens your bones and tendons. And nothing works better than weightlifting to improve your looks and energy. Now is the perfect time to call Soloflex. Call now for your free brochure. Welcome back to ESPN Classics presentation of the 1966 U.S. Open Golf Championship. Arnold Palmer's go for broke style excited the public. They loved it when he hitched up his pants and hit shots others wouldn't even dare to try. In 1960 at Cherry Hills in Denver, Palmer was still in search of his first U.S. Open title. Arnie began the final round seven strokes out of the lead, and when he asked columnist Bob Drum of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette what he thought would happen if Palmer shot a 65, Drum shot back, nothing, you're out of it. That's all that Palmer needed to hear. Not only was Arnie never one to back down from a challenge, he relished those times when the odds were stacked against him, for these were the moments when his immensely competitive nature really showed through. The steam was coming out of my ears, Palmer would later say. So Arnie decided to make a statement on the very first tee. The hole was 346 yards long, a par four. In the rarefied Colorado air, Palmer knew he could get himself and the crowd going with a big drive. With one mighty swing, he drove the green. Two putted for birdie and was on his way. He shot 65, moved past 13 players and made up the seven stroke deficit to win his open. By the way, two of the players who Palmer defeated that day, legends at opposite ends of their playing career, Ben Hogan and Jack Nicklaus. Let's now return to our coverage of the 1966 Open at the Olympic Club with Arnold Palmer hanging on to a three-shot lead as he plays the par 5 16th hole. Here at the 16th, this is Bill Fleming reporting from the Olympic Club in San Francisco and the Goodyear blimp shows you how the 16th looks from above. Lined with trees, really a double dog leg it swings around onto a green that is one of the largest greens on the golf course the pin placement today is well back and so it is playing a little easier than it has played Arnold Palmer however may not agree with that there is the Goodyear blimp that has been providing us with such beautiful live color pictures all during this tournament of a very beautiful city by the way Arnold Palmer in trouble on the 16th. You just saw him lose two strokes to Bill Casper. His lead has now shrunk to three. That's where it was when it started today. He built it at one time to six. It's back to three. It's hard to tell from Arnold's reaction just exactly whether he liked it or not, but the ball came out apparently onto the fairway out of that very tight rough here on the 16th. Incidentally, uh, golf is a very sentimental game and uh, certainly a nostalgic game, and I know everybody who watched Ben Hogan here, and he had great galleries, wanted him so badly to do well, and he did do well. He got a 70 today, and he's in with 291, and I don't know whether our general electric computer would disagree with us, but we've been figuring out here at 16, and we found that Ben Hogan is now in 14th place, and there is nothing that can dislodge him from that spot. So it means that he is qualified for Baldus Row at Springfield, New Jersey in 1967 for the Open. Now let's go back to Chris Schenkel at 18. Thank you very much, Bill Fleming. Byron Nelson here behind the 18th green with me. And Byron, the man on the green, Tony Lima, uh, a local product. He uh, hit his second shot out of the rough. He made a pretty fair recovery, lying three on this green on a par four hole. And there you see the size of the crowd. There are thousands on the hillsides. 
to the golfer's left of the green, all around it, as you see now, as we look on from the back of the tiniest green on the course, about 2,400 square feet. And Tony Lima has quite a putt coming up, and this is for his par. Right, Chris. This, uh, Tony is... four over par at this time for the tournament. Tied with Jack Nicklaus. He left that putt short considerably. Most people have from back of there, as you can see. He still leaves him a tricky little putt to uh, play. How come him, uh, he drove in the rough to the left on this hole, which you did not see. And uh, this rough is so tough that rough just grabbed the club head, so to speak, and left the ball short in the rough to the right. And then he was still in this long rough and couldn't hold the green with because of the grass getting between the club head and the ball. And uh, he rolled about 20 feet past the hole. And now he's putting for a bogey five from about five feet on this very difficult, tricky green. Yesterday, uh, Tony had a fine round of par 70. And if he can get down with this putt, he will have shot another 70 and a 285 total. And at the moment, uh, he is in third position of this tournament. And if you can finish in third, it's $9,000. Yes, he realizes every bit of that, too, Chris. Almost straight. Mm. He either pulled it or misread it. I'm inclined to think from sitting where I am that he looked like he pulled it for a double bogey six for Tony on the last hole. So it's a round of 71 for this popular professional. Out of Marco Island, Florida, a 71 today and a 286 total. He is the leader of those that have finished 72 holes in the United States Open. Right now, back out on the course, and here's Bill Fleming. Here's Arnold Palmer getting ready to hit his third shot. It looks like a spoon, a three wood from out on the edge of the fairway. He has a very good lie after that recovery shot, his iron shot from the rock, and boy, he smashes it. Drawing it in, and it goes into the trap. Not long enough, and that means Arnold is there in three. Billy Casper has a good lie up the fairway just a little bit from Arnold. So the chances are very, very good here for Casper to pick up yet another stroke, which would put him two strokes behind Arnold Palmer. Bobby Nichols is in the clubhouse with the 289. Uh, John Miller, a young amateur you've seen for the last couple of days here from San Francisco, has won the amateur championship here. And right now on the 16th hole, a quick look at this par five. Arnold has played it in uh, five strokes, uh, getting six, five, and four. Billy Casper uh, played it in five, four, and six. Now Bill Casper looking things over. Bill has had really two fine rounds and then one uh, average round. And there's the Arnie's army from the blimp overlooking the 16th. Casper had 69, 68, and 73 starting today's round at 210, even par. Palmer, 71, 66, and 70. Third shot of Bill Casper coming up. Oh, a fine shot. Look at that. Stopping 12 to 14 feet from the pin. So Arnold Palmer is in the bunker and will have to play out of that trap. We'll be back with more from the U.S. Open Golf Championship in just a moment. This time of year, I need Ocuhist. Ocuhist Eye Allergy Relief. It's anti-itching, anti-redness, antihistamine relief for your eyes. So it relieves eye allergies fast. My eyes feel great. Ocuhist from Visine. It gets the itch out. Hi. Hey. You quit smoking. Did I? He didn't quit. He uses Targon mouthwash. Your teeth look whiter. Look how Targon removes tobacco tar from these tiles. Your breath smells so fresh. If you smoke, use Targon. What inspired the Xterra was where sport utes weren't going. They were going upscale, more sophisticated, or they were going toy-like. What was left open was at the very heart and soul of what a sport ute was born to be, an enclosed truck that could get you anywhere, you know, and do anything. Chicken sandwich at Burger King. It might not be 
a miracle, but at just 99 cents, you gotta admit, it is kinda sexy. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. The hair is big, the tube socks are high, and the action is down and dirty. Can you dig it? All the moves are on ESPN Classic, roller derby style. Ouch. Right on. The forces of good versus some bad. Shut your mouth. So join the pack for a crash course in old school. I'm talking roller superstar. You said it. Friday and Saturday late nights only on ESPN Classic. Baby, it's Dino Mike. You're watching the 1966 U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. And here's the way things stand now. Through 15 holes, Arnold Palmer is four under par for the tournament. Billy Casper, one under par for the tournament. He's one under today. Getting a nice hand as he comes up and a big broad smile to this huge throng at the 16th. Billy putting on a bit of a charge of his own. The official score has notified us that Palmer is lying four in the trap. We'll try to get word for you as to why as soon as we can. Right now, he's getting ready to hit this shot. He has a bit of a break in that the pin is far back. Play that full explosion right out. It's a dandy. Well, Billy Casper will be putting for his birdie here. So Arnold Palmer is up here in five and Bill Casper with a chance for a birdie. Wow, how things can change. Bill won the Open Championship in 1959. Palmer won it a year later in 60. Casper gets four here. He now has dropped to minus two. That means 68 for today. The word on Arnold Palmer is that he muffed a shot in the rough, which we did not see, and he does live five. This is putting for a six. He has a three-stroke lead up to this hole. He could lose two or maybe three right here. It's about three feet, three and a half feet. He's got it. He still has a one-stroke lead. And as you can see, he held his breath on that one. So Arnold Palmer is minus three and Bill Casper minus two. Only one stroke separates them as they go to the final two holes, 17 and 18. And look at the spectators here bordering the Pacific Ocean at the Olympic Country Club running for vantage points as the United States Open appears to be having another of its tremendous finishes. Three of the last four years, there have been playoffs in this great championship. And Arnold Palmer has been involved in a couple of them over the last few years. And now he is having his problems as a red-hot Billy Casper who has birdied the last two holes, is having a Casper charge of his own right here at the Olympic Country Club. Chris, that uh, is certainly true 
is the way the score stands now. Casper birdied the 17th, the 16th, and Palmer bogeyed it, which gained two strokes in the last two holes, only leading Palmer by one stroke now. Nicholas is third in five over. Tony Lima here's the 17th hole you can see the people moving getting out of the way for these uh, great players to drive on this hole that 16th hole is a very tricky par five and if you do get in trouble which Arnie did off the tee and pulled his tee shot into those trees can be very disastrous and with that uh, one shot behind Billy Casper playing the two toughest holes here is his tee shot on 17 wind starting to kick up here on the Olympic course and there's Casper's shot in the right rough as the golfer looks up the 17th fairway. And here on the master scoreboard, it has gone up. The fact that Arnold Palmer has bogeyed the 16th hole and Casper has birdied it. And it means that the tournament has changed completely. A man that had the lead by six shots now leads by one. Let's watch and listen to his tee shot. is in the rough to the left and Casper drove badly in the rough to the right so they'll both have a difficult job of making a four on this difficult 17th hole and those shots will be coming up momentarily as we'll be back with more action from the United States Open Golf Championship in just a moment if you end up using anything but AC Delco parts in your car who knows where you'll end up AC Delco if you're not asking for it you're asking for it. You know, I always recommend AC Delco Automotive Parts to all my customers. They're some of the most dependable you can buy. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. These days, it seems like everybody's got a Cherokee or an Explorer. Me? I like to stand out a bit. That's why I drive a Subaru Outback. With a big cargo bay and all-wheel drive, you get all the sport utility you need. But with a smooth ride and better gas mileage, the Outback is far from ordinary. Like me, really. What a weird-looking bunch that was. She's sending out her wedding invitations with her personal 800 number. Because now all her calls are just a dime every time. You too can live happily ever after. Call Sprint at 1 800 pin drop now. Last year, Lee Jansen claimed an emotional victory at the U.S. Open. This season, the field is stronger than ever. The championship is up for grabs, and historic Pinehurst number two is the battleground. Will the 1999 title go to one of the tour's hot players, or will this year's winners surprise them all? The 1999 U.S. Open. Early round coverage begins next Thursday at 11 on ESPN. Welcome back to ESPN Classics presentation of the 1966 U.S. Open Golf Championship. Famed writer Dan Jenkins said about the Olympic Country Club in San Francisco, hold the U.S. Open there and the wrong guy will win it every time. Olympic first hosted the Open in 1955, and going into that championship, the golfers complained that Olympic's rough was too thick, that the greens were too small, and the distances too long, leaving not a lot of room for other criticism. This didn't deter the confidence of Jack Fleck, who was playing in his first full year on tour. Fleck wrote a letter to a friend claiming that he could win the Open that year, a bold statement considering that nothing in Fleck's career to this point suggested he was good enough to accomplish that task. Ben Hogan held a two-stroke lead with four holes to play over his nearest competitor who just happened to be the lightly regarded Fleck. Most in the gallery were pulling for Hogan, hungry for his fifth Open title, something which had been accomplished by no one else in history. But Jack Fleck rallied to force a playoff. With his Hogan-made clubs in hand, Fleck completed the miracle by defeating Hogan the next day by three strokes. Now, although Billy Casper had far greater credentials than Jack Fleck did, Arnold Palmer was clearly the fan favorite as he made his way around the Olympic club seeking his second open title. As Palmer and Casper play the 18th, Hogan's 72-hole record is secure. But the question is, 
who will emerge the victor in 1966. Drama unfolding here at the dramatic Olympic golf course, the lakeside course of the Olympic Country Club in San Francisco, California. Here you see uh, a computation made by our memory computer in Phoenix, Arizona, as a result of information fed it from San Francisco. And just like that, they can show you what performance Palmer and Casper have done on the 17th hole, the 435-yard par-4 test of golf. As you see, Casper has played the 17th hole better than Palmer. However, both are in the rough. Palmer on the golfer's left, Casper on the right. And to hit this target on this, the toughest hole, and to hold the green is the real problem that these two champions, each having won an open championship. Byron, to make a four now, in the position of their second shots, is going to be quite a feat. It would be a most uh, unusual feat. Of course, Palmer was in the rough quiets here yesterday and got a four. As you can see, he's going with an iron because it's, as you can see, you can't see the ball at all because it's down this four inch rough. over on the right hand side now and leaving about a 40 yard pitch up to this hole. Byron that has happened so often from the rough here at Olympic that it just crosses over to the opposite side of the fairway slipping off that club head and uh, well what happens Chris is that grass grabs the club and opens the face of the club as you hit it but as you hit the ball and makes the ball slide off to the right or, or uh, slice as the golfer would say. Now, Looks as though Casper's lie is not quite as bad as Palmer's, but he's going with an iron, and I would say that he will have a very difficult job of reaching the green from here with an iron. He's going to change the uh, club. Looks like he may change his mind is right. Still going with an iron, though. Just short of the trap in front of the green, just in the long grass, just by the edge of the trap, leaving both golfers a nice little pitch to try to get close enough to save a par four. Casper behind by one stroke after two great birdies on 15 and 16 to Palmer's bogey, bogey. And as you see, Palmer is three under for the tournament, Casper two under. While Arnold Palmer and Billy Casper only one stroke apart, moved to their third shots on the par 4 17th. We'd like to remind you that ABC Sports, in addition to bringing you exclusive coverage of the NCAA football season this fall, will bring you two of the great preseason football classics this summer. From Atlanta, Georgia, you'll see the Coaches All-America football game, and from Soldier Field in Chicago, you'll see the Green Bay Packers take on last year's top collegians in the college all-star football game. So don't forget to look for exciting preseason football this summer in all the color and pageantry of the NCAA football next fall exclusively on ABC. Arnold Palmer, who this year in our first ABC Golf Championship, he won it in a playoff with Gay Brewer in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Desert Inn. He leads by one shot. This is his third on the par 417. Beautiful shot, Chris. It's only about uh, nine or ten feet from the hole. Putting uphill. Now Billy Casper, who's a little closer to the green, will uh, have to pitch over the sand trap, pitching downhill slight bit. Palmer, three under for the tournament. When the tournament started, he said he'd like to have 278. He has two pars for 277, so he was guessing rather close. Billy Casper, you see there, just in front of this big trap, in front of the uh, sand trap, in front of the uh, 17th screen to the left. Casper, a very, very steady player. At the moment, the applause you hear is uh, back at 18, where Dave Marr, uh, six over, and Jack Nicholas, five over, are coming to the 18th screen. But here's Billy Casper, one shot away from the lead. Oh, 
What a shot. It certainly was. It kept rolling, though. It looks as though it's going to be very, very close. But he, the way this man can putt, uh, he's uh, in a very good position to save his par four. The shadows caused by one of the 30,000 trees that are here at the Olympic Country Club. And that's a huge one, a huge pine tree behind the 17th green. We have cedars, pines, eucalyptus, and that gives you a good idea from our Goodyear blimp, the shot of just how trees have turned this, what once was a sand dune, into a championship golf course. It's a course that has no water hazards, only one fairway bunker, but it is tight, narrow, and a true test. And only two men who started this tournament in a field of 151 are shooting under par golf. Chris, the same championship in 1955, Hogan and Fleck tied with 287. The rough was a little more difficult at that time. Arnold Palmer trying to make his four at the 17th. Leading by one. straight uphill and left it just a little bit short and you can see that he was surprised about it and uh, and it looks as though Arnold Palmer will come up with his third bogey in the last five holes Byron he did he tapped it in already and Bill Casper has this little putt here to tie this championship with only one hole to go after being number of times today six behind then five behind then of course he's gained two strokes on 15 and 16. This putt will break a little bit to his left. You can see the worried look on Arnold's face here. He has a very expressive face. He... 11 former Open champions started here on Thursday, and here are two of them battling it out. And he made it right in. Championship is tied at this point. So what more could you ask for? In color from Olympic, the championship is tied, coming to the 18th, the 72nd hole. Arnold Palmer, who once today led by six strokes, has lost the lead and is tied once again. Jack Nicholas, former Open champion, who defeated Palmer in a playoff in 62 to win it. He is here at 18, finishing his fourth round. So if Jack can put this putt in, he will have shot a 74 today. He will have a... And now here, thousands of spectators just learned at the course that the tournament, the championship, is tied. We look around, we see Joseph C. Dye, Jr., executive director of the tournament, trying to silence the crowd because there are two men that want to putt badly on the 18th hole, Nicholas and little Davy Marr. His Ward Fouché also looks on. Ford Harding from St. Louis. Fouché, the president of the USGA, and Jack Mr. Harding, one of the committee members. And here it is for a 74 for today's round, Jack Nicholas. 74 and a 285 total. He is the lowest of those who have completed four rounds. A 285, which is five over par. Tony Lima, six over par. Casper has hit his drive, and he has come off to the right, but he is in the fairway. He might have some trouble with some overhanging trees on his approach to the 18th green, but he is in the fairway. The tournament is tied. Now Arnold Palmer. Chris, a few holes ago, everyone thought that the championship was over. Golf is the strangest game in the world. Golf is never over until the last putt is in. Arnold Palmer getting ready to play using an iron on this straightaway hold. He wants to get in the fairway. Of course Very he narrow hits, fairway. Hits irons a mile. Oh. And he pulled that one into the rough on the left-hand side. But he's far enough down there that uh, he would still have a difficult shot out of that rough to uh, pitch to this uh, difficult uh, postage stamp green, though, Chris. With Nicholas here at 18th Green getting a 74 for a 285 total, Dave Marr has just fired a 73 for a 286 total, tying Tony Lima at that spot. 
We'll be back with more action from the United States Open Golf Championship in just a moment. Stuart, can I see you in my office, please? That kid is sick. That hinge is squeaky. He's very sick. Stuart, get in here. Sure thing, Mr. B. Stuart, I just opened my Ameritrade account. Let's light this candle. Let's go to Ameritrade.com. It's easier than falling in love. What do you feel like buying today, Mr. P? Kmart. So research it. All this stuff is provided for you free of charge. No cost. Yeah, that's synonymous with free. Looks like a good stock. Let's buy. Let's buy 100 shares. All right, click it in there. Okay. How about 500? 100, Stuart. You feel the excitement? You're about to buy a stock okay. online. Okay. Oh! Fabulous. I'm thrilled. What did that cost me? Eight dollars, my man. Mike Broker charges me two hundred dollars. Riding trade. the wave of the future, my man. <laughs> I gotta get a soda. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Wait P. I'm having a party on Saturday night if you really want to go. I'm gonna try and get there. Happy Thank you, Stuart. trading. Thank you. Rock on. All right, Stuart. Call toll free 800 573 9914 or visit Ameritrade.com. Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. Once you own the Holland Grill, you'll wonder how anyone could live with anything else. Its patented no-flare-up system takes the guesswork out of outdoor cooking, so you can relax. How's it look, honey? Instead of watching the food, for your free grilling kit and video, call 1-800-474-3521. Should we invite the Hendersons over? Nah. The Holland Grill. Nothing else stacks up. If you want to see the greatest uncut fights of all time, you've got to watch ESPN Classic. Now experience boxing's most unique show, an exclusive look inside the ring with a champ, Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar, Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray's Hit Parade. He'll take you through historic battles and give you the inside story behind every hook, jab, and knockout from fights that are totally uncut. Sugar Ray's Hit Parade. Tuesday at 9, only on ESPN Classic. So close to the action, you got to duck. Are you old school? Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sport Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now, Regal comes with something that'll make it even easier to drive. Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. You're watching the 1966 U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. From our Goodyear blimp, a color camera shot of the Olympic Country Club, and this is where it all unfolds now. The 18th green, the tiniest on the course, and a golf that can a game of golf that can often make you feel awfully tiny and humble. And it has done that to Arnold Palmer. He has bogeyed three of the last four, while Billy Casper has birdied two of the last four. And we have a tie for the 66th Open title as Palmer has reached the location of his drive off the 18th tee using an iron. And Casper is moving in the direction of his drive, which is in the fairway on the right-hand side as the golfers look on. And look at the crowd. Huge site of the 1955 Open, the 1958 Amateur, which was won by Charlie Coe right here, and Arnold Palmer played in the 1955 Open as an amateur and finished 27th. Chris, here's a most important shot. He's in that deep rough with about 120 yards to go. Small green. He played a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shot. Just unbelievable from where he was. 22 feet right in the back of the hole. He yes. must have had a great amount of adrenaline going to dig that ball out of that rough and put it on that green. The ball has come to rest behind the flagstick near the back edge of the green. He is at that position in two on this par 4 18th. And Billy Casper is looking into a very bright sun as he is ready to hit his second shot. He is in the fairway. And let's watch. He played a beauty. He put it, half, he put it halfway inside of Arnie. He's on about uh, 12 feet right in back of the hole. So don't go away, ladies and gentlemen, because we'll be right back. This time of year, I need more than an ordinary eye drop. I need Ocuhist. Ocuhist Eye Allergy Relief from Visine. It's anti-itching. It's anti-redness. 
It's antihistamine relief for your eyes. Ocuhist's special antihistamine formula stops the itching and relieves eye allergies fast. My eyes feel great. Get Ocuhist Eye Allergy Relief from Visine. It gets the itch out. Marfa Lump! Are you downstairs again, honey? Oh, not now, Ma. Oh, I gotta get out of here. I'm late. The Maxima has a legendary power plant. It's been known as a state-of-the-art engine uh, for a long time. This one is even better. The engineers figured out a way to get 32 more horsepower into the car to bring it up to a total of 222. You can feel that right away as soon as you push the accelerator. Whoa! U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. Each have reached the green and two on this par four hole. Nicholas, Marr, and Lima have finished their 72-hole championship play. And they, like thousands here and millions across the country here on ABC television, will now, with a great deal of interest, watch the long putt of Arnold Palmer and the medium-sized putt of Billy Casper. In the dark sweater, there he is. He led at one time by six shots. He led at by three when they started out the fourth and final round today. And now, as you see, he is two under, and so is Billy Casper. In the event of a playoff, should this develop, ABC Television will be back on the air tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern time, to conclusion. Palmer will putt first. Chris, this putt that Arnie has is uh, almost straight on this green. It's Most people who have had this putt today have left this putt a little short. It's not as fast as it looks. Arnie's had to putt a lot of putts for a lot of championships, and he has one now. Way short. He has about a three and a half foot putt left. This screen has fooled many players from the back of that hole today, and it apparently fooled him too. And now, with the continuous putting rule, Byron, it means that he will hold out because he is not in the line of the putt of Billy Casper. How about this putt, Byron? Reed? This, this putt will break. Uh, very, very little. This putt is almost straight in. The, 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 the pressure on this putt, uh, there'd be no way that you could measure, the, not even the computer machine, on the pressure on this putt, because he realizes that he must make this putt, or Casper will have two putts to win. This, this is probably one of the most important putts that Palmer's ever had in his life up to now, and he's had some great ones. Complete silence. And he... Palmer makes his four here at the 72nd hole for a round of 71 and a 278 total. Both he and Casper going for their second open championship. Casper in 59, Palmer in 1960. Palmer has been involved since, having tied twice for the lead 
in playoffs, losing both. And now Billy Casper is in some position, Byron. He's this is a big, big putt. I'm telling you, I'm glad I'm not having to make these putts. I'd rather be sitting right here watching them, Chris. Now, this putt that Billy has, he'll putt rather fast after he once gets over the ball, so I'll tell you now. This putt that he has will go, has been running almost straight until it gets a hole and then go a little bit to the left. We'll see how Billy reads this putt. And, of course, as you have undoubtedly figured, with it, uh, the situation that we have, if Casper holds this putt, he will win the United States Open Championship. And it's too high, Chris. It's way too high. So he pulled it off to the left. He's never had a chance to go in. He has this putt for about 18 inches of a tap-in for a tie for a playoff tomorrow. It's amazing how quiet 10, 15, 20,000 people get. And it's in, in a tie. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last five years, four playoffs, and this is one of them. Billy Casper and Arnold Palmer have just tied after regulation play of 72 holes with a four-round total of 278. And in the last five years, it'll be the third time that Palmer has been involved in a playoff in an open championship. On our first telecast this year of a great season of golf at the Tournament of Champions, Palmer was in a playoff and beat Gay Brewer in a fantastic round of 69 in the win to Brewer 73. So tomorrow afternoon, Byron, you were going to go. I was going to leave, and so were thousands of others. But our ABC color cameras will remain here. And at 4 p.m. Eastern time to conclusion, we will be bringing you the playoff in the 66th Open Championship. And it's just hard to believe that Palmer led once by six strokes, was tied, and Great. now it's tied after 72 holes. Chris, uh, the shot that he uh, pushed to the right in that sand trap at the 15th hole, the far three, where he could not get down in two, seemed to kind of uh, shake him up a little bit. And then, when, of course, when Casper saw his opportunity and moved in with that great birdie putt there. So we go into the 23rd playoff tomorrow of the United States Open, and Bill Fleming has come up from his 16th hole location, and he's going to be doing some talking after the scorecards are signed. And there are color camera view from the Goodyear blimp of the cars and, of course, all the thousands of people that have come out for this championship. Bill Fleming getting in position around the 18th green as he'll be talking to Palmer and Billy Casper here. What a day, what a four rounds of golf, and we'll look for another big one tomorrow as we'll be back with more action from the United States Open Golf Championship in just a moment. the Norelco Advantage for 21 days. There was quiet dissension. I'm not giving up my blade. And anxious inquiry. The heck is this? You? But then we started to realize the lotion actually gave us a closer, smoother shave than we expected. Without the nicks and cuts like blades, our fear diminished. Our hopes arose, and life got a little less hairy. Mama. Face, move it. The Norelco Advantage. Put it to the test. If you don't like it, they'll give you your money back, guaranteed. Lee Jansen claimed an emotional victory at the U.S. Open. This season, the 
field is stronger than ever. The championship is up for grabs, and historic Pinehurst number two is the battleground. Will the 1999 title go to one of the tour's hot players, or will this year's winner surprise them all? The 1999 U.S. Open. Early round coverage begins next Thursday at 11 on ESPN. You're watching the 1966 U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. Well, here are the two gentlemen who staged this dramatic duel here today, Billy Casper and Arnold Palmer, and as you know, we're coming back again tomorrow. And at the end of nine holes today, Bill, it didn't look like you were going to be back here tomorrow playing a playoff, did it? Well, uh, I looked at the scoreboard at the back of the in back of the tenth hole, and uh, I was fighting to uh, finish second. It appeared to me. Uh, it looked like Arnold was so far ahead that no one had a chance to catch him, and then he hit a couple bad drives in the rough and uh, made a couple bogeys, and uh, that's, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Arnie, you were seven strokes up at that point, and then all of a sudden things began to happen. Well, Bill, I uh, did somewhat the same as I did yesterday and uh, didn't quite recover today like I did yesterday. I had, uh, I never felt at all uh, bad out there. I felt like everything was going pretty much my way, and uh, I think the big hole was probably uh, the 15th there when Bill uh, putted in for a uh, two and I missed my par putt and then I began to wonder you know I knew what could happen out there and probably that's what just exactly what did happen. Well of course at 16 we had a little confusion too because we actually lost a stroke of yours. What happened in there? Your drive hit the tree. Well I lost so many in there Bill that <laughs> I uh, Actually, that's probably one of the greatest sixes I've ever made. Uh, I hit my drive, it hit a tree, and uh, then I took a three iron from not too bad a lie, or at least I didn't think it was too bad, and I thought, well, I might be able to get it out where with a long shot I might get around the green or even home, and I left it in the rough, and then uh, after leaving it in the rough, I took a uh, nine iron and just pitched it out. I couldn't do anything else with it. It was so deep then, and... Uh, then the uh, next shot uh, was a three wood, which I was aiming for the sand trap, put it in the sand trap because I didn't think there was much chance of uh, getting it on the green, figuring that I might be able to make, uh, get up and down and make my six. Uh, and of course, uh, Bill was pretty well back on his third, so he really hit a great third I shot. I had a five iron on my third shot, yes. And, uh, of course, I did make six, but he made his putt for a uh, birdie, which cut the lead right down to nothing then. Bill, I don't know what you thought at that point, but uh, I'm sure that went through your mind, now I've really got a fighting chance. Well, uh, I just try to play within myself whenever I go out on the golf course, and I try to let whatever happened happen, and uh, fortunately it happened sort of my way on the back nine today. Well, <clears throat> Bill, you had 68, and uh, Arnold, you had 71 today, so you're 278 at one time. It looked like you might break... Uh, Ben Hogan's record there, Arnie, of uh, 276. Well, I certainly had that in mind, uh, Bill. I thought about the record and certainly thought that I might have a chance at it. Uh, back on the, uh, well, when I picked up the birdie at the uh, 12th today, I felt like, well, my chances are uh, pretty good now of doing it. All I need to do is uh, par in or even pick up another birdie, and I'd be in real good shape. But uh, that's when things started happening. You know, gentlemen, it's certainly true about this golf course. It is like the sleeping lady. Boy, it can really get up and slap you if, if you make one little mistake, like hitting the tree on, uh, on 16. Well, Bill, I, uh, when the tournament started, I just figured if I could shoot four rounds and not be over and over 71 in any one of those rounds, that uh, my chances would be pretty good. Uh, not even thinking about the 66 that I shot. And, of course, I did that, but it just didn't work out the way I had it figured. Bill, you've had some marvelously steady golf. You've had 69, 68, 71, and the 68 today. Really four beautiful rounds. Bill, I wish that's, that uh, 71 that you mentioned were true. I'd won the tournament by two shots. I oh, actually 73. had 73. That's right. Uh, that's right. I, I'll tell you, Bill, this is one of the finest golf courses that I've ever played, and it seems like the USGA do a splendid job in selecting the site of the National Open every year. And uh, I think the members here at uh, Olympic Club should be commended for their the wonderful job that they've they've accomplished in getting this golf course in shape and uh, it's been a just a splendidly run tournament and I'm just thrilled to be here how do you like the new rule the speed up uh, rule the continuous putting rule bill well I think it's uh, definitely uh, 
help speed up the game. Uh, I don't know of anyone that uh, has complained this week about uh, speed, the, the, the fast play. Uh, I know uh, if we hit some very soft greens and play in back of some fellows with very large feet, well, then it might cause a problem. <laughs> Arnie? Well, I uh, also, I feel like the uh, golf course was a wonderful golf course. Uh, as far as the putting rule, uh, I think it's fine, except when you uh, leave one about three feet short like I did here at 18, and you have to go right on up and uh, waggle it in the hole to well, get a tie for the National Open, or at least hope for a tie. You know, it would change your strategy, uh, you know, completely because under the old rule, Bill would have had to putt. He wouldn't have known, of course, whether you're going to make that one or not, and uh, it, it could change the whole com uh, complex of it. It's, it's, it's possible, but uh, you never really know. You can never really tell. You can't second guess something like that. Uh, if it uh, were meant that uh, he was to miss the putt, he would have missed it. If I, I was meant to make it, I would have made it. You're really a or, fatalist. That's right. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, how do you feel about the playoff? Uh, Arnie, you've been in two National Open playoffs since you won the title in 60. You were in one in 62 and one in 63. Uh, didn't turn out too well those years. Uh, you're right, Bill. Uh, I haven't been very fortunate in the uh, National Open playoffs. This will be my third one. And, uh, of course, uh, you always feel like, well, there was three or two other tournaments you could have won. And uh, here I end up in another one uh, for this year's title. Uh, uh, I don't know. We're just going to have to go out and see what happens tomorrow. Bill, how about you on playoffs? Well, uh, I haven't been in any National Open playoffs. I've been in uh, several playoffs. Uh, I've won one, I think, and lost two. You don't mind uh, going out uh, just like you did again today, do you? Well, this will make 54 holes I've played with Arnie. That's right. It's, that's quite a stretch with one little old feller like that. Uh, Arnie has played quite well these last two rounds, uh, with the exception of just a, a handful of holes through the two rounds. and. Uh, he has putted extremely well, I think, and uh, he has played quite well, both. Well, you're very complimentary there, Bill, and I'll tell you this, you have played some marvelous uh, rounds yourself, and your putting has been superb. The putt at 16 was a very, very big one. Yes, uh, I was very happy with it. Uh, I hadn't hit too many of them solid from uh, starting about uh, five on through, through uh, well, I made a good one at 12, but uh, from five up until about 15, uh, I had a lot of chances and uh, I didn't hit it too solid. None of them went in. I'm here at 18. Uh, well, we're going downhill with the grain and it breaks from left to right. And it's, uh, if you hit it a little hard, you could, it can get away from you. And uh, I'm guarding against the three putt. Yeah. Well, the best of luck to each of you tomorrow on the playoff. Bill Casper and Arnold Palmer, 18 holes tomorrow here at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. We'll be back in just a moment. Give them something they really need for college, a gateway performance PC with an Intel Pentium 3 processor, free printer, and a free year of internet, all for just $45 a month. Call 1-800-GATEWAY. How come so many professional athletes wear copper bracelets? Hey, that's Chi-Chi Rodriguez. I think my energy band improves my golf game. Now you too can have the Chi-Chi Rodriguez energy band. It combines the power of copper with the harmonizing power of magnetics. He really looks good too. The energy band is beautifully crafted from solid copper, then electroplated in genuine 24 karat gold with a stunning white gold accent. Patent pending magnets make it truly unique and it's designed to comfortably fit your wrist. Copper and magnetic bracelets sell in catalogs for up to $150 and more. But the Chi Chi Rodriguez energy band is yours for only $19.95. Order yours now while supplies last. That's being a winner. To order, use your credit card and call 1-800-717-0808. That's 1-800-717-0808. Or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Call and order right now. 
Big Fights Boxing Hour gives you access to the largest boxing library in the world. Here's what you can check out in this library. Rare footage of classic fighters, the stories from outside the ring, and volumes of the greatest action in boxing history. Every week, Al Bernstein puts you ringside for classic fights you can't see anywhere else. Ali, Marciano, Leonard, Lewis, plus hard-hitting fighters every boxing fan ought to know. Big Fights Boxing Hour, Tuesday at 10, only on ESPN Classic. I started looking at the Toyota Camry, the Volkswagen Jetta. When I finally got to the Hyundai dealership, I found the Sonata had a lot more to offer. This was the most unbelievable warrant I'd ever heard of. 10 year, 100,000 mile on the drivetrain. Has the air conditioning standard feature, good sound system. Right now, you can get 0.9% APR financing on the Hyundai Sonata. I plan on keeping this one for a long time. Get in the car. Welcome back to ESPN Classics presentation of the 1966 U.S. Open Golf Championship. With Arnold Palmer and Billy Casper tied at two under par through 72 holes of play, the national championship would now be decided by an 18-hole playoff. The United States Open is unique in that it is the only major to play an extra 18 holes when deciding its champion. The United States Golf Association, which conducts the Open, believes an 18-hole playoff is the truest test for determining a champion. Although many may disagree, the USGA reasons that by playing an entire extra round, there's less of a chance of luck or unusual circumstance affecting the outcome. Arnold Palmer himself lost both the 62 and 63 championships on the additional 18 holes. He opened up the 66 playoff with another dazzling performance on the front nine. In the fourth round, Arnie went out in 32. This time, he shot 33 and held a two-stroke lead over Casper. Unfortunately for Palmer, he also played the back nine like he did on Sunday, missing everything in sight. Bogies on the 11th, 14th, and 15th, coupled with Casper's birdies on 11 and 13, resulted in a startling five-shot swing. Casper now led by three strokes with four holes to play. We now resume our action on the 16th hole, the par five, where Billy Casper and Arnold Palmer are ready to tee off. It was here yesterday, as you recall, that Arnold Palmer was leading by three strokes coming into the hole. When he left the hole, his lead had been cut to one. And now how the tables have been changed. Billy Casper now leads by three strokes with three holes to go in this playoff. Casper hits. And it caught a little bit of the tree, bounces into the rough. Yesterday, Arnold Palmer's tee shot caught the tree, dropped straight down. His first shot out of the trap, out of the uh, rough in there, went about eight feet. And as you know, he took six. But he does get a break there with Casper's tee shot just nicking that tree. This is a 604 yard hole, by the way. Arnie keeps it on the right side this time. And a little too far right. It drops straight down after hitting the tree on the right. So this has been a wicked hole for Arnold. He's had two bogeys here, one par and one birdie during the four rounds prior to this one. Billy Casper has had uh, two birdies here, a par and a bogey. And as you can see, it's Casper who is now two under. Palmer one over through the 15th. This is one of the real giant golf holes, championship holes in golf. As you can see, coming down through the tunnel of cypress and pine and eucalyptus, it comes down to a rather large green, trapped, well trapped on both sides. But the key to this hole is that the second shot is, is practically blind also. It's sort of a half moon hole, more than a dog leg. Nobody in this entire tournament ever got home in two. The closest was Jack Nicholas, who was just about 90 yards off the front. This is videotape uh, earlier of what the hole looks like. And as you can see, the tree on the right, just in the upper right of your picture, has been the, the key tree here. That's the one that guards the tree. So if you're down the left side, you, you simply have to play to the right. And there it is again. You know, they took a tree out on 17 here uh, prior to this tournament, and there were 330 golf balls that fell out of it. 
And our pictures today, as they have been for the last two days, coming from the Goodyear blimp, hovering lazily over San Francisco. But the weather really has been superb for this tournament. Arnie uh, Palmer started out today in pretty good shape, getting uh, a birdie at the fourth hole to take the one-stroke lead. He was up by two at the end of five. And then uh, Billy Casper got a birdie at eight. Palmer's lead was cut to one. And then Arnold got the par at the ninth hole, and Casper bogeyed it. So uh, uh, Arnold turned in 33 and Casper in 35. But it's been a different story on the back nine. Arnie in that heavy rough. And you can see what happens. You see that club? I'm sure Byron Nelson could comment about just exactly how tough that rough is. That club uh, face came into it with as much power as anybody in the entire game of golf can give it. And you saw what happened. It went about 20 feet. Make it 20 yards. Looks a little more like it. Now Casper's shot also caught the tree on the left side. There's the big tree that guards the green as the golfer views it from the left. The pin placement is it's almost diabolical today. It's right behind that huge gaping bunker at the beginning of the green. And now Arnold probably has a spoon out. That's what he used yesterday for his yeah, so. shot. That was his fourth shot yesterday. This is his third. He's got about 290, maybe 300 yards to carry. Oh, boy, that's a beautiful shot. Up maybe 50 to 60 yards from the green in three. So we'll be back with more of this playoff for the U.S. Open Golf Championship in San Francisco in just a moment. There comes a point when one more sequin will ruin the dress. When one more brushstroke will spoil the painting. There comes a point when anything more is simply more. Park Avenue by Buick. Power, comfort, unparalleled elegance. And now, Park Avenue is even more rewarding. It's luxury, pure and simple. The song of the great whales can be heard for hundreds of miles. It's a beautiful way to communicate long distance. But this one costs 99 cents. Dial 1010-220 and all your long distance calls up to 20 minutes cost only 99 cents. And only 10 cents for each minute over 20. Any day, any time, anywhere within the U.S. and to Canada. No fees, no sign-ups. Just dial 1010-220, then one and the number, and talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. Lots of deodorants are talking antibacterial protection. Fact is, every deodorant is antibacterial, so it's not about that at all. It's about whose deodorant lasts longer. High endurance. Its 24-hour formula evaporates less quickly than the leading stick. Old Spice guarantees it, or they'll buy you a stick of yours. If you want odor protection that really lasts, high endurance exceeds the need. Go one-on-one -on -one with the legends you'll never forget. Well, I'm in love with classy sports is because it gives people a chance to see for themselves some of the things that we do. Anybody that gets in my way is going to pay. I knew I could take on these women in my prime, but the prime was gone. I got the chance to live my dreams. The ABA was the most special of times. Yeah, but I don't remember too well. That's what happens when you play without a helmet. <laughs> Go one-on-one, -on -one, chap one-on-one, -on -one, Monday at 6.30, only on ESPN Classic. It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> You're watching the 1966 U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. 
And now we're back at the 16th at the Olympic Golf Club in San Francisco as Bill Casper has hit out of the rough safely into the middle of the fairway. And now he's walking up the middle, checking his own notes. Now the big tree that we've been talking about is about 120 yards from the green. And Bill is about, I'd say 40, maybe 45 yards beyond that. Just to continue with how this play has gone so far today, after Palmer turned in 33 and Casper in 35, they both parred the 10th hole. And then probably the significant hole, Palmer bogeyed the 11th hole with a five and Casper birdied it, sinking about a 30 footer. And the match was even at that point. They parred 12 and at 13, Casper for the first time in this tournament took the lead with a birdie three. Palmer bogeyed the 14th to fall two strokes back he bogeyed the 15th to fall three strokes back. He lies three now, and Casper lies two. And it's coming up to the center of the green in very fine position for his two putts to get home just in the par figures and now the pressure on Palmer this is how the players have done on the 16th hole Billy Casper doing a little better than Palmer as mentioned he got uh, two birdies a bogey and a par for an average of 4.75 strokes in this par 5 hole Arnie has two bogeys a birdie and a par all of this uh, being computed by our General Electric computer in Phoenix, and we're deeply indebted to that for all of the information it's given us during this championship. I don't think it could have predicted what happened yesterday, however, with Arnold Palmer, who was seven strokes in the lead with only nine holes to go, found himself in almost a nightmare in the last nine holes, and he wound up in a tie for the championship. Today, he had a two-stroke lead at the end of nine, and that disappeared immediately after the 11th hole. If, by any chance, these golfers should tie at the end of 18 holes, they would go back to number one in sudden death. And we will, of course, bring you that action. And now let's watch Arnold Palmer in a critical shot. Casper's on in three. Arnold is lying three. Oh, he's got to hurry. He didn't. He caught the trap. Well... That is real trouble because he is in the trap. He just wanted to get it over because the slick green here, he just wanted to carry on. He only has about 28 feet from the edge of the green to the pin. The shot did not come off. He is in the trap. Things that make you go. Juicy Chicken Sandwich at Burger King. At just 99 cents, the taste isn't the only thing that makes you go. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. Set it free and it will return the favor. ESPN Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes. He not only redefined his position, he forever changed the way his sport is played. Eight Norris trophies, three consecutive MVPs. Twice he led the league in scoring, assists five times. Quite possibly, the greatest defenseman of all time. Sports Century athlete number 31, the legendary Bruin Bobby Orr. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN. Presented by General Motors. You're watching the 1966 U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. Arnold Palmer getting ready for this bunker shot at 16. And out it comes. Fine shot. He was right underneath the lip. But he's left himself a six-footer. He was in the trap. One in four. He's on in five.
that's the way it stands coming into this hole. But Billy Casper is on this green in three, and Palmer is on in five. So there are two strokes. Sixteenth has been a big hole. It certainly was yesterday. As was 15, where Palmer lost two shots to Casper and two more here. Then he lost another one at 17. He lost five strokes in three holes. Casper's been playing superb golf. 69, 68, 73, 68. Good firm putt, and it's going to scoot past about three and a half feet. Those of you who have been following us during this U.S. Open Championship have been brought up to date on the new continuous rule in putting. So Casper will now putt out. This is for his par. I think Bill is probably the only professional golfer who represents a racket club, a tennis club. He used to represent the Peacock Gap Golf Club, but that was sold uh, recently, and now he represents the Peacock Gap Racket Club, 15 miles north of San Francisco. fine putting strokes in golf. And he misses it. He three putts. That's only the second time in five rounds that he has three putted. Well, we certainly know what this means is on the green in five. He can tie Casper if this drops. Five and a half, probably six feet. I wonder what Arnold is thinking. He shakes his head, knowing full well that that was the one chance because if this drops, he'll be four strokes behind. So Billy Casper, with two holes to go, leads Arnold Palmer by four strokes as we move now to the 17th, where Jim McKay is standing by to bring us that hole. Jim? All right, Bill, thank you very much. A discouraged, heartsick, I'm sure, Arnold Palmer moving to the 17th tee. In the past five years, he's been involved in three playoffs for the U.S. Open Championship. He has yet to win one. In 1962, he lost that dramatic head-to-head -head playoff with Jack Nicklaus in Oakmont. 1963, it was a three-way playoff with Julius Boros and Jackie Cupid. He didn't win either one of those, and it looks like he's not going to win today. Arnie's army is still quietly following the leader. A good many of them, I think, have become Casper's commandos by now. Bill Casper has played magnificent golf all through this championship. During the first 72 holes, the regular tournament, Casper did not have a single three-putt green. You saw him have one just now, and I think that's a measure of the ultimate tension that is working on both of these men right now. Here's the way they stand. Casper one under par on this round today. Palmer three over. When they made the turn, Arnold Palmer was two under, and Casper was even. So it's been somewhat of a repetition of yesterday, but not in quite as extreme a fashion. This is the 17th hole, 435 yards long, par four. You'd like to favor the right side of this fairway, if possible, without going into the road. There is Bill Casper hitting. And he's going to catch the just the edge of the rock. I think it may actually be on the fairway. He could have kind of a tricky shot there, as a matter of fact, where he has to pull the club head back through the rough but hit the ball on the fairway. Well, let's see what Arnold Palmer can do. On this hole yesterday, you remember, there was a swing of two strokes when Palmer drove into the right rough, hit the ball across the fairway into the left rough, finally end up with a bogey, and Casper, it was a swing of one strike, usually Casper got his par. Arnold 
teed into that ball, but let's see where it's going to land. It is in the right rough again and fairly deep. It is almost in the same place he was yesterday, but it's a longer shot than yesterday's was. It's, it's out there uh, quite good. We'll be back then with more action from the U.S. Open Golf Championship in just a moment. Giving your deck a facelift is as easy as one, two, three. Creating the perfect patio is a snap, step by step. With decks, porches, and patios, you can get step-by-step -step help for all your outdoor projects. It's filled with crystal clear color illustrations to guide you every step of the way on dozens of projects. Plus, there's a lie flat binding so you can keep your hands busy on the job. Now you can take the first step by ordering decks, porches, and patios for only $1.99. Use your credit card, and as a special bonus, you'll get kitchens free. That's two books for just two bucks. Tackle any project with Time Life's Home Repair and Improvement books. With Home Repair and Improvement, you're sure to get professional quality results, step by step. Plus, you'll get the pro's best tricks of the trade to save you even more time and money. Give your kitchen the makeover you've always wanted with custom cabinets. Freshen up the bathroom with a new shower. Do it yourself and save a bundle. Call now to get two books for two bucks. Use your credit card to order decks for only $1.99 and get kitchens free. Improve it, install it, renovate it, build it, step by step. With Time Life's Home Repair and Improvement, you can turn your house into the home of your dreams. Call 1-800-416-9696 to get two books for two bucks. Order decks for just a buck ninety-nine. Check it out with no obligation. Use your credit card and get kitchens free. That's 1-800-416-9696. Call now. Last year, Lee Jansen claimed an emotional victory at the U.S. Open. This season, the field is stronger than ever. The championship is up for grabs, and historic Pinehurst number two is the battleground. Will the 1999 title go to one of the tour's hot players, or will this year's winner surprise them all? The 1999 U.S. Open. Early round coverage begins next Thursday at 11 on ESPN. Billy Casper bogeyed the 17th hole, while Arnold Palmer made par to reduce Casper's lead to three shots. We now return to the coverage on the 18th, the par four, where both players have already hit their tee shots. Palmer is in the right rough, and Casper has hit a magnificent tee shot off the elevated tee here at the 18th hole, a perfect approach to this tiny 18th green. You can see the branches of the trees. That's just one of over 30,000 that were planted here on the sand dunes along the Pacific Ocean many, many years ago to form one of the great tests of golf. Well, Byron, uh, will Arnie have a problem with those overhanging limbs on his approach shot to the 18th green? Oh, yes, he certainly will. He's uh, down, uh, actually, he's under the trees, Chris, and he will not have any open shot to the green at all. He'll have to there's no way you can play the ball low because you have hitting a long rough uh, in front of the green. It wouldn't uh, run up through this grass. He's going to try, I'm sure, to go very high out of this rough up over this tree if at all possible. And if it's all possible, he can do it. Arnold Palmer getting ready to play, not taking much time. Realizing three strokes in one hole is a tremendous handicap to overcome with Casper right in front of the green. And he played it, magnificent shot, but having to go so high over the trees, the ball stopped short of the green, just in front of this little trap, in, in, the, uh, in between the two little traps in this long rough. Now, Bill Casper getting ready to play from about 100 yards in front of the green, leading by three. As you can see, he played a great shot, put the ball about three feet from the hole. And this, Byron, I guess we could say that's really pouring it on. That's really pouring it on. The yesterday he took over where Arnie left off. He has picked up the admiration of everybody for his very steady play. This man is uh, always has been underrated as player because he was such a great putter. A lot of people have not realized how well he plays. Now Arnold Palmer comes through the gallery and
And Arnie Palmer in a cherry red sweater about to hit his third shot out of the rough. It'll have to come across the tiny bunker which guards this tiny green. Byron, who will putt first? Oh. Well, I... It's going to be hard to tell from here exactly. I believe Palmer will be two or three inches away, but it's hard. I really couldn't call it from here, but that was a magnificent shot. The best shot I've seen played across that little trap. As they prepare to putt, Byron, we could point out when Billy Casper won the Open at Wingfoot, he used 114 putts, and in four rounds, which were completed yesterday, the seventh, Arnie's 121. And that is magnificent stroking on the putting surfaces wherever you do it. It certainly is. And, of course, these greens have been in magnificent shape. And uh, they are small, which is, I think is always an advantage to a real fine putter that Casper is. Arnold is away behind by three, about a three-and-a-half-foot putt. Almost straight in from there. Fine par. A 73 for Arnold Palmer. Acknowledging the applause. It's a very hard pressed smile. Knowing Arnold Palmer, a great champion who has been in three playoffs for the Open Championship in the last five years, and he has lost all three. And Billy Casper in his first. Arnie having been in three playoffs already here in 1966, winning one and losing two. This is for a round of 69. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. One of 12 men who have been able to capture the Open Championship twice. Three men, four times. Anderson, the great Bob Jones, and the great Ben Hogan as Joseph C. Dye, Jr., executive director of the USGA, along with Ward Fauché, president of the USGA, congratulate both golfers. That's and in this 18-hole playoff, look at that shot. Shirley Casper, along with Linda Marie, one of the three Casper children, congratulating uh, their dad, who incidentally took two weeks off the tour to play in the open. He had some personal business, and he had to get some dental work done in Byron. Now he's won $25,000. He is going over the $500,000 mark as the number two man in the all-time money won. We'll be back with more action from the United States Open Golf Championship in just a moment. There comes a point when one more sequin will ruin the dress. When one more brushstroke will spoil the painting. There comes a point when anything more is simply more. Park Avenue by Buick. Power, comfort, unparalleled elegance. And now, Park Avenue is even more rewarding. It's luxury, pure and simple. Chicken sandwich at Burger King. It might not be a miracle, but at just 99 cents, you gotta admit, it is kinda sexy. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. Okay, people, this is a phone, and this is a dollar. You still with me? Well, that's good. Now, dial this number, and all your long-distance calls from home could cost less than a buck. That's right, with 1010-220, all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Talk longer, and it's just 10 cents for each extra minute. No fees, no contracts. Am I right, Poochie? Just dial 1010-220, then one, then the number. Bottom line, you get up to 20 minutes on this for less than this. You got that? Good, because if I'm not mistaken, I think nature's calling my dog. Wow, you're feeling a lot of love right now. They love me. For that car insurance company that uh, saved you some money. This relationship could last, huh? They love me. But uh, when you run into trouble, will they still love you? Not. At Progressive, we've got a lot more respect for our customers than that. Oh, sure, we give you low prices. In fact, 60,000 drivers a week like them so much, they choose us. 
But you know what they really love is progressive service that uh, even those, you know, expensive insurance companies can't touch. Like a fleet of immediate response vehicles that can be on the scene when you really need them. So uh, actually, yes, it is possible to have a low price and service in, well, the same relationship. Call Progressive now and see why those other 60,000 drivers a week choose us. <sighs> they love me. This is ESPN Classic. The NBA Finals. They bring out greatness in those that are good and make heroes out of those that are great. 1970, the Knicks and Lakers hit the hardwood as Chamberlain and Reed go one-on-one. -on -one. Then Larry Bird and Magic Johnson define the 80s. And the NBA's best, Michael Jordan, begins the Bulls dynasty in the 90s. 16 games spanning three decades. Don't miss the ultimate NBA Finals, only on ESPN Classic, all day Saturday. You're watching the 1966 U.S. Open on ESPN Classic. Uh, the lady with the scarf that is now obscured by... One of the observers here at the Olympic Club was Shirley Casper, and there's Linda Marie Casper and Byron. She looks a little grim, but I know she's happy. Well, I'm sure she's very happy, uh, and that's his wife, Shirley, there, and she looks very happy, and of course, right that they should be, because Billy has played magnificently in this tournament, and uh, they're a really a great family, a very close family, and they uh, did a lot of business. Billy had to take care of this the last two weeks, but. I was talking to him, I was talking to him earlier, uh, before the tournament, I was here quite early and I was talking to Billy and I never saw a man in his relaxed uh, condition really to play in an open championship as what he was. And he was striking the ball so well, well, I kind of went on, on the limb at that point and said that I believe that Casper would be one of the very strong men to contend with in the tournament because the frame of mind that he was in in the, this course just suits him, these small greens and uh, narrow fairways because his putting is great. But uh, the rest of his game has been uh, overlooked because of his uh, great putting ability. Byron, how do you account for the fact that Arnold Palmer, who at one time yesterday led by seven shots the day before, or when he started the round, he led by three, and then he led by two today, and here he's uh, defeated by four shots? It's very difficult to uh, guess a golfer, but uh, he's. Uh, what happens uh, is that you turn... Uh, on the defensive. I'm sure he turned defensive when he was leading by seven shots yesterday. It's hard to say about Palmer, but I believe that he really did. Byron, what was the pressure? You have been in two open playoffs. You won one in 1939, and then you lost another in 46. How uh, intense is it? Well, it's really much more difficult, the pressure, than in the actual play of the tournament because you have now tied and you're in the playoff, and you know this is it. This is the only chance that you're going to have to win this championship. Well, Byron, uh, at this moment, our colleague Bill Fleming is around that tiny 18th green after a great victory by Billy Casper, who was born right here in California in San Diego in 1931, June 24, which means that he can celebrate his birthday in an open victory, his second, first in 59 and here in 1966. Bill Fleming is ready. Here he is. All right, thank you very much, Chris. It hasn't even been 24 hours since we were last here with Billy Casper and Arnold Palmer. But things have changed. At that point, they were tied, and Bill Casper, as you know, has won. It was really a great match today. And, Bill, you took the lead for the first time at the end of 13 holes. First time, as a matter of fact, in the tournament. That's correct, uh, Bill. Uh, I uh, suddenly came up with a fantastic putting stroke today. Suddenly? Yeah. Do you agree to that, Arnold? <laughs> well, I don't know how suddenly it was, Bill, but it was pretty good. You know, Arnie, uh, this back nine has been uh, tough for you all week. Yes, it has, Bill. I've had trouble on the, uh, well, actually starting with the 14th hole driving it and the last two days with 13th. So uh, those holes seem to be the ones that have really given me the most trouble and certainly cost me the tournament. You know, uh, you fellows were playing so quickly today that uh, when we came on the air, you had already passed the 15th, but it was a very critical hole. And uh, we thought we'd let you both comment on the hole itself as uh, Arnold, uh, you caught the sand, as, as a matter of fact, on the drive. That's right, uh, Bill. I, uh, I saw Bill shot up there, and I thought he was long. That was just a uh, uh, 
little misconception. He hit a seven iron, and I uh, eased off of my seven just a little, pulled it to the left, and caught the sand trap there, and was almost impossible to get it close to the hole out of there. I had a uh, very difficult shot to lob it up. I was in the uh, grooves of the sand where I couldn't get the uh, club on the ball to pitch it up in the air high enough to stop it, and as a result, did pitch it quite long and uh, missed the putt for a bogey four, and then Bill uh, rimmed the cup for his two, and at that point took a two-shot lead. Let's take a look at that uh, trap shot itself, Arnold, and uh, you can comment on it as it comes up here. Well, Bill, uh, as you can see there, I've got a bank sloping away from me uh, over the uh, lip of the sand trap there, and uh, of course I couldn't lob the ball high enough to do much about it. I uh, certainly was trying to do that, but I had to take too much sand and uh, just couldn't get the ball high enough, and as a result, it did go about 25 feet by the hole. Well, at that point, uh, Billy Casper had taken a three-stroke lead, and then came the big 16th. And, Bill, <laughs> I'm sure after you hit your drive, you kind of wondered if maybe the fate would turn around as it did for Arnold yesterday and turn on you. Well, you never know about those things. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, hit it quite solidly and uh, actually hit it considerably further than Arnold hit his yesterday. Of course, he hit the tree, but... Uh, Nevertheless, you, you're, you have to have a bit of luck when you do hit it in the rough to have a fairly good lie. And I had a reasonably good lie. I was thinking about hitting a three iron. I decided, well, maybe I'd better take a five iron and hit it. And I hit it about like I'd hit a four wood. I must have hit it 220 oh, yeah. yards. Great shot. And uh, from there, I hit a seven iron on the green. And uh, then uh, I thought I was going against the grain a little bit. And I hit a good solid putt. And it went by the, feet of the, by the hole about four or five feet. And, uh, and I missed it coming back. And that was only the second three-putt green, uh, Bill, that you had had in the entire tournament. I think the first one came today at nine. Yes, it, it was at nine, and uh, I three-putted three of the last, uh, I guess, the last ten holes. Uh, as far as the hole itself, uh, Arnold, you had had a little trouble on that. You'd had two bogeys prior to that, but today I know you tried to keep it on the right side uh, instead of the left side, and there was trouble over there, too. Well, that's right, Bill. I felt even if I... Uh did miss it like I did and put it in the right rough. The rough wasn't bad there, but I finally found a way to come up with a pretty <laughs> bad one. And uh, there again, I tried to get a little more out of it than I probably should have and uh, just couldn't get it out of that rough. It's real tough stuff, isn't it? Uh, it was pretty tough today. Uh, incidentally, are either of you going to play in the British Open? I am not, Bill. Uh, I can't say for Arnold. Are you? Yes, I am, Bill. I will. Uh, be over there. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have a chance to see you uh, live on the satellite from Muirfield, Scotland, the, again this summer, coming up this uh, July 9th. As far as the entire tournament is concerned, uh, gentlemen, uh, Arnold at one point said he used every stick in his bag almost every round. Billy, uh, did you find that you had to be very, very versatile to win here at Olympic? I believe so, Bill. Uh, the golf course changed uh, from minute to minute out there because of the wind that swirls over these trees in here. And uh, quite often you would stand there and the wind would be blowing from one direction. And by the time it was your shot, uh, it had switched around and was coming from a different direction. So you would actually change clubs while you were standing there waiting right. to play a shot. Well, all we can say to you, Arnie, is that you have been in the championship three of the last four years. And uh, there's always next year. Well, that's right, Bill. I guess uh, right now that's all we have to look forward to is next year. And Bill, to you, congratulations. The second Oakman championship that you won, duplicating the feat that you made at Wingfoot in 59, and I know you must be a very happy guy. Well, I certainly am, Bill. Uh, I'd like to say that if you could throw out about a handful of holes that Arnie played, uh, he would probably be in number one spot instead of number two, and uh, he played wonderfully well. Of course, I played with him the last three days, and uh, I always enjoy playing with Arnie. He's a great, great fella and a great player, and... Uh, He'll win the Open again, I'm sure. Let me tell you something about Bill Casper. There were 15 subpar rounds, and Bill Casper had four of them. Congratulations, Bill. Thank you. Arnie, thanks for joining. Thank you, Bill. So incredibly, for the third time in five years, Arnold Palmer lost the Open title in a playoff. Still, when the playoff was all done and he had lost to Casper, he handled it with graciousness and class. And maybe that's one of the reasons why, after all these years, Palmer remains one of the most beloved of all American sports figures. As for Casper, you know, the perception over all these years is that he didn't so much win the Open as Palmer lost it. Maybe that's so, but take a closer look at the numbers. Including the playoff, he shot four rounds under par. No other competitor in the entire field 
had more than one. So in 1955, Hogan was supposed to win the Open, but he didn't. In 1966, Palmer was supposed to win the Open, but he didn't. It was not the last time that there would be a surprise winner in a U.S. Open championship at the Olympic Club. Thanks for watching ESPN Classics presentation of the 1966 U.S. Open Championship. I'm Jimmy Roberts. ESPN Classic continues in just one moment. Welcome to ESPN Classic. I'm Jimmy Roberts. Today we take a trip back to 1967 and the U.S. Open Championship at the Baltus Raw Golf Club from Springfield, New Jersey. In the 1960s, golf was about two names, Palmer and Nicholas, both of whom dominated the early half of the decade, winning a combined 13 majors through 1966. 67 proved to be no exception as Arnie and Jack accounted for three tournament wins and a host of top five finishes going into the United States Open in early June. Now, the national championship was returning to Baltus Raw for a record fifth time, and with the Palmer-Nicholas rivalry in full bloom, fan interest couldn't have been any higher. The first U.S. Open held at Baltus Raw was in 1903, when the national championship was a mere nine years old. The top prize? $200. Willie Anderson held off a fellow Scot named David Brown in a playoff to win his second of a record tying four open titles. In the 67 championship, Palmer and Nicholas both got off to strong starts. They stood first and second on the leaderboard. But when both former champions struggled in the third round, the door opened for an amateur by the name of Marty Fleckman, who took a one-stroke lead. Fleckman was threatening to join Jerome Travers, the 1915 winner, as yet another amateur champion at Baltus Rawl. Nicholas quickly put those aspirations to rest, making five birdies on the front nine to take a commanding lead. Meanwhile, Arnie, playing with a sore right hip, struggled to keep up with the Golden Bear. Now, let's join announcers Chris Schenkel and Byron Nelson as they recap front nine action from the final round of the 1967 U.S. Open Championship. Palmer's putt for a birdie two earlier on the fourth hole. Palmer is really wanting these... Uh needing a putt at this point. He's played beautifully, but has not been able to hold many of these putts in this championship, and this is no exception. He goes by a little bit. They doesn't, the hole doesn't show there, but he's skidded past the hole a little bit. The very same two men that when Jack Nicklaus won the Open Championship in 1962, he won it by uh, defeating Arnold Palmer in a playoff. Yes, that was a great playoff at Oakmont uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. A very great golf course and two, of course, of the all-time great players. Very little wind here today. It is hot and humid. It is overcast. Some threat of showers. Now, you know, Arnie taking the practice putt here. He has this putt for a par three, keeping the putter real smooth and real low to the ground. In and three, starting with all four first four holes all pars now this is Nicholas putt for a birdie two that will start him on the surge in which he is still doing at this moment made it look very easy it looks easy when they go in that way Chris and uh, the fact that he's using a metal putter a rocker putter painted white will cause most everybody watching our telecast to immediately start painting their putters white <laughs> Yes, Th this is the next group now playing to immediately behind. Here's Billy Casper on the fourth tee, defending champion. He, hook he hooked the ball into the trap. Left of the green. Billy was playing absolute super golf and yesterday up until the 15th hole, and then he said he lost his concentration. Another great picture of this hole, and he finished in three bogeys in the last four holes, which is rather an unusual thing for Billy to do because he's one of the steadiest players on the tour. And at the moment, he is trailing the leader, Jack Nicklaus, by four strokes, Byron. 
Yes, that is a big uh, lead for Jack. Now you see Marty Fleckman getting ready to play to the uh, fourth green. Of course, this happened uh, a little earlier as Jack Nicholson and Arnold Palmer are playing the 11th hole. Billy Casper is out there. All the contenders, and when they come into our camera range at the 13th hole, we'll be bringing you all the action live and in color. And later, uh, the folks in Great Britain will have an opportunity to see our telecast live and in color on the satellite and a delayed telecast to Japan. Yes, well, he, he hooks this ball. Watch the people move. He hooks the ball back into the crowd over the trees, into the trees then into the crowd. He started off very shaky today, but it's a difficult job to lead this championship for a man who's never even played in it before. This is the second round that he has led this tournament. And, of course, having led after 54 holes, made him the first amateur to have accomplished that since Johnny Goodman did it in 1933. It's an odd thing that the last... Uh, now look at look at this shot. He has to place down over this high bank. Pin cut very close to him. The very the pin is very close to that edge, back edge of the green. He's under the tree, but as you see, he played it very beautifully. Left the ball uh, as you can see about 12 feet from the hole. Very well executed and played shot. Marty Fleckman, 54 hole leader, starting out shaky today. He did two of the previous three rounds. Billy Casper, as you see, playing out of the sand trap, stopped the ball very quickly. He's, his bunker play here has been exceptionally good, though. He likes this sand. Some of the boys say it's a little very light, and the ball comes out fast. But Casper has played the ball very, very well. And he, like the other 66 or 65 players today, have raved considerably about Baldus Raw. Split screen, you see Fleckman on the left, and on the right, Jack Nicholas at five, Fleckman at three. Flick Fleckman need this for par, as you saw, he got it. That uh, set him down considerably. N now then you see, you see Nicholas putting here for a birdie on the fifth hole now. This is a, will be the second birdie in a row for Nicholas. There he goes. Birdies at three, four, and five for Jack Nicholas, and seven in the last 12 holes, uh, counting yesterday's two finishing holes at 17 and 18. Now Billy Casper. You know, when birdies start coming, they come in bunches, Chris. So Cas Cas Casper missed his putt in giving him a bogey four on the fourth hole. A little earlier, Ben Hogan finished 72 holes of play. He is in at 12 over par with a round today of 72. From Baldus Royal Golf Club here in Springfield, New Jersey, the 67th United States Open continues after this message. <laughs> 